Hello ladies and gentlemen, scare 24 here bringing you another Minecraft World War II BAFTA build tutorial. In this tutorial we'll be going ahead and building USS Ticonderoga CV-14. USS Ticonderoga CV-14 was one of the 24 Essex-class aircraft carriers built during World War II for the United States Navy. The ship was the fourth US ship to bear the name and was named after the capture of Fort Ticonderoga in the American Revolutionary War. Ticonderoga was commissioned in May 1944 and served in several campaigns in the Pacific Theater of Operations, earning five battle stars. Decommissioned shortly after the end of the war, she was modernized and recommissioned in the early 1950s as an attack carrier or a CVA, and then eventually became an anti-submarine carrier or a CVS. She was recommissioned too late to participate in the Korean War, but was very active in the Vietnam War, earning three Navy unit accommodations, one meritorious unit accommodation, and 12 battle stars. Ticonderoga deferred somewhat from the earlier SS-class ships in that she was 4.9 meters or 16 feet longer to accommodate bow-mounted anti-aircraft guns. Most subsequent SS-class carriers were completed to this long-haul design and were referred to as the Ticonderoga class. At the end of her career, after a number of modifications, she was said to be in the Hancock class according to the Naval Register. Ticonderoga was decommissioned in 1973 and sold for scrap in 1975. So the USS Ticonderoga here definitely saw a lot of service. I think that's a bit of an understatement. She served in many of the major conflicts around that time, from World War II all the way up into uh, the Vietnam War and a little bit of the after period. Um, she was a very uh, important ship because of that and um, definitely did her time um, as a aircraft carrier. Obviously with newer advancements, if the carriers, they... Essex class just in general became obsolete and that led to her retirement and now we have the Nimitz class and the uh, upcoming General R. Ford class to kind of uh, take up that role. Overall, overall it's a really cool ship and we haven't really done too many World War II uh, vessels for the Americans um, in terms of the uh, aircraft carrier role so really nice to kind of go back and uh, get another one added to our American section for our carriers, and hopefully we'll start to see a few more come, especially with our Japanese carrier force being absolutely stacked at the time being. Um, with that, though, let's go ahead and move in here to take a look at the Essex and see exactly what we're going to be going ahead and building. So this design here can be used for many of the different Essex-class uh, ships. Um, she was uh, obviously one of the Essex, but she and the designs that followed after her were the long-haul designs, so they had the mounted aircraft guns in the front uh, bow of the ship. That was one of her main differences from the earlier Essex um, that preceded her. Um, obviously, with the front aircraft guns mounted there, the guns along the sides of the decks, pretty straightforward stuff. Very similar to that of like the Yorktown class, where she has the different uh, doors on the sides of the ship that allow um, access, venting, you know, you name it, um, along the sides. So, pretty uh, straightforward design there, very typical of American fleet carrier. Uh, we also have the uh, addition of a side uh, elevator, which was something that was very really new with the Essex. Um, so instead of having the elevators all down the main deck, they actually had one to the side. So it kind of made them a little bit more efficient in carrier operations. Uh, we then had the conning tower here, um, which is pretty cool. Uh, again, pretty standard, um, smaller profile compared to that of the previous carriers. Um, also has the dual 5-inch guns out on the front and uh, rear of the island, which uh, I think is pretty cool. It's a cool design instead of having them mounted on the front there. Um, after that, on the other side here, again, just more anti-aircraft guns. It's pretty much the same all the way down. Uh, a bunch of aircraft guns, different little, um, you know, lifeboat areas and just various little um, things along the side of the ship. The stern of the ship here, nothing too fancy and... That's pretty much that. So, overall, really cool ship. Um, an awesome addition to our World War II American line. As pretty much like the pinnacle fleet carrier of World War II. If you count the Midway, but the Midway wasn't really done in time. So, I think the Essex here is definitely that pinnacle World War II carrier. Anyways, though, without further ado, let's go ahead and move into the tutorial. Alrighty, guys. So, going ahead and moving into our first layer here. We will be going ahead and start with layer number one. Now, a quick few things I want to mention here before we go ahead and get started is that for the first few layers here, we will be doing half on camera, half off. What this means, I'm going to be building the center line of the ship and then building the right side. It'll be up to you guys to take the right side and copy it over to the left side. And this is going to work for about the first three layers. And then after that, we're going to be going ahead and doing both sides all together as basically everything starts to kind of get... Um, starts to defer on both sides so uh, for the first three layers it's pretty much the same thing on both sides so just kind of go ahead and save some time and we're gonna go ahead and do those sides um, you know kind of just half um, on and then they're half up to you guys to build 
based off that first half we built. Um, in addition, if you want to build the ship in the water, which I imagine most of you guys are going to want to do, you do want to make sure you position this correctly in the water. This here, layer one, is going to sit one block underneath the water surface. You can see here this red concrete block is the start of our bottom of our hull, and this blue concrete here represents that water level, so it's one block underneath that surface. Once you have that squared away, we can go ahead and get started with this. First thing we want to do is we're going to place down a red concrete block. Coming off this block, we're going to place down two red other brick walls forward and then a red stained glass pane. The other direction, uh, we're going to go ahead and go back from this red concrete block and we're going to place down a long row of red concrete. So we have the one, so it's going to be two, and you're going to go all the way down until you have a total of 40. So again, from that first block all the way up there after that red and other brick wall, all the way back to this block here is going to be 40 red concrete blocks in total. So quite a long row to go ahead and do. We then want to place down a red nether brick upside down stair. We're going to go ahead and skip one, two, three spaces and then place down two red nether brick top slabs on the end. And that right there is going to make the center line of the ship. And that right there is what you guys want. Now what we're going to do now is we're going to take everything now and build on the right side. And everything we do on the right side now is going to be translated to the left side. As you can see, it's already on that side. We're going to go ahead and start off by placing down an acacia wood trap door on the side of the second red concrete block, we're going to go ahead and place down two red stained glass panes. We then want to place down a red nether brick wall, then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31 uh, red concrete blocks in total. We'll go ahead and double check our length, and we do have 31 red concrete blocks all the way down. Once we have that done, we're going to go ahead and place down two red nether brick ups down stairs and two red nether brick top slabs which will then be followed up with two lightning rods going back. And a case wood fence gate, open that toward the middle there. And a case wood sign on the fence gate like so. And then a birch wood slab coming off this fence gate like that. We then want to place down a birch wood slab coming off this this end, or this uh, lightning rod right here. And then going forward from it, we're going to place down an acacia wood fence gate. And again, we're going to open this toward this ship itself. And then a acacia wood sign on the side here. We then want to place down two lightning rods going back or sorry, three lightning rods going forward like so. And we're going to go ahead and then place down two red nether brick top slabs. Taking our red concrete, we're going to go forward 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, and 24 red concrete blocks. I'll go ahead and jump up double checker count here, and we have 24 in total. We then want to place down a red nether brick wall, two red stained glass panes, and then a acacia wood trap door here on the front. After that's done, we're going to go to the second and third red concrete blocks on the side. We're going to place down two of the acacia wood trap doors, two red stained glass panes, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and thirteen red nether brick ups downstairs. After that, we'll place down one, two, three, and four red stained glass panes, and then an acacia wood trap door after that. Then we're just going to take some acacia wood signs, and on the third stair from the front, and the third stair from the back, we're going to place down a cache wood sign. And we're just going to go ahead and then connect these signs together by going ahead and placing down a row all the way along the stairs in between those a cache wood signs. Once you have that all complete there, that is going to wrap up everything we have for layer number one of the build. Again, you're going to take what we do on the right side and flip it over to the left side. So this is what you should have for the top down view. With that all complete, that's it for layer number one. And with that, we'll be going ahead and moving on up to layer number two. Moving into our next layer, we have layer number two. For layer two to start with, we're going to place down a red stained glass pane on top of this one here on the front from the previous layer, and then a red nether brick wall back from that. We're going to go ahead and place down a long row of red concrete going all the way down the center line of the ship. And this here is going to be a total of 45 blocks, or it's going to stick two past this red uh, nether brick stair from the previous layer. So again, uh, 45 red concrete blocks from that red nether brick wall all the way back to this point here. After that, we're going to go ahead and place down a red nether brick top slab and two red concrete blocks on top of those two red nether brick top slabs, and then in case you would trap door on the back here. We're going to go ahead and place down a trap door on the side of this red concrete block and this top slab here, and then we're going to place down a uh, row of two of red nether brick top slabs. We're going to go ahead and place down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, and 39 red concrete blocks forward. And I'm going to go and double check the count here, and it should be 38. So make sure it's 30 blocks in total, going all the way from that top slab to the front up here on top of that red and air brick wall. 
We're gonna go then place down a red another brick wall after that, then two red stained glass panes, and then an acacia wood trapdoor like that after it. Once we have that done, we're gonna place down another acacia wood trapdoor come off this second block, and we're gonna go then place down two red stained glass panes, and then a red another brick wall after that. We then wanna take our red concrete, and we're gonna run a row of red concrete back. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, and 27 red concrete blocks back like so. We're gonna go ahead and place down two red nether brick ups downstairs and two red nether brick top slabs like that. Once we have that done, we're gonna go ahead and go to our second from last red concrete block. We're gonna place down an acacia wood trapdoor like so. And we want to go and then take our red stained glass panes and place down one, two, three. We're going to go and then take our red nether brick walls and we're going to place down one, two, three as well. And then we're going to place down a row of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and thirteen red concrete blocks forward. Then two red nether brick walls and two red stained glass panes, and then in a case you would trap door like so. And after we have that all done, that right there is going to conclude. Well, we have a four layer number. Uh, two of the build. Here is a top-down view of what it should look like so far. And with that, we'll be going ahead and moving into our next layer, which will be layer number three. Moving into our next layer, we have layer number three. Layer three here is going to be the last layer. We're doing the half on, half off. And from after this layer, we will be going ahead and doing both sides all together. Anyways, so let's go ahead and get started with this. First thing we're going to do is we're going to place down the inside wall on top of this red stained glass pane. And then we're going to place down a row of stone blocks going all the way down the center of this ship for a total of 50 blocks and then a stone stair upside down on the back. We're going to go ahead and place down a stone top slab on the side of this block, stone upside down stair here, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four, twenty five, twenty six, twenty seven, twenty eight, twenty nine, thirty, thirty one, thirty two, thirty three, thirty four, thirty five, thirty six, thirty seven, thirty eight, thirty nine, forty, thirty one, forty two, and forty three. 32 33 34 35 36 37 38 39 40 41 42 and 43 stone blocks forward, then an andesite wall, two uh, light gray stainless panes, and then an iron trap door, like so. And this iron trap door we can close for my Java players by going ahead and type the command slash give at p minecraft colon debug underscore stick. And we can use this um, this command right here. Uh, press enter will give you this glowing stick. Now what we can do here is we can left click this iron trap door till we get selected open false. We'll right click this and set this to true and it will sit flat against the side of the ship. Now you can use birchwood trap doors as an alternative if you're not on Java. However, if you um, don't want to use birchwood trap doors, which is understandable, they kind of stand out a lot, um, then you can go ahead and just disregard them. They're just kind of a little bit there for shaping. We're going to go then go to the second stone block on the side here. Close this one trap door using the same methods as described before. We're going to place down two light gray stainless panes, an andesite wall, and then a row of stone. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, uh, or my bad. Went a little too far there. We're going to stop right there. And let me go ahead and get a good count here because I was kind of, uh, misplacing a lot of those <laughs> blocks so I was a little all over the place there um so let's see this is going to be a total of 31 stone blocks from that that wall back it's going to end right before, one right before the slab we're going to go then place down two andesite walls after that then we're going to go ahead and place down uh three light gray stainless panes and then their iron trap door which will close using the debug stick we then want to go ahead and go to the stone block here we're going to place down so this is the third stone block from last we're going to place down an iron trap door again close that like so one, two, three glass panes, one, two, three andesite walls, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, and seventeen stone blocks, two andesite walls, a light gray stainless pane, and then an iron trap door, which again we'll use our uh, lever, our debug stick to close manually. And that right there, I believe, is it for this layer. Just gonna go and double check, make sure I'm not missing anything that's special on the right side, and. Um, there's nothing so that right there is going to be it for layer number three and here is a top-down view of what it should look like so far once you have that all complete um, that is going to be it for the half on half off and from here on out we will be going ahead and building um, each layer all together so with that let's go ahead and dive into layer number four all right guys so moving into our next layer here we have layer number four as i mentioned this right here is where things start to get a little asymmetrical so you will see some things that are different on the 
the two sides. So just make sure you're following along and you're doing the right thing corresponding to the side we're working on. Um, the way we're kind of going to do this is we're going to build a little bit of the, the center line and then we're going to go ahead and kind of expand out to the sides once we get to that point. So um, that is going to be the goal and let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to place down a stone block on top of this wall. We're going to place down a lever coming off this wall going forward and this is also going to be followed up with a skeleton skull that we're going to go ahead and place on the two sides of the stair. So just or on the full block, so it's like that to both, uh, both sides. We're going to go ahead and place down one, two, three, and four stone blocks down the center. To the sides of the first two stone blocks, we're going to place down light gray stainless panes and then two andesite walls on the, the next two stone blocks. We then want to place down an item frame on both sides of this first uh, light gray stainless pane and then we're going to place down a crossbow in the item frame and rotate it so that the crossbow is pointed downwards for our anchor. After we have that complete, we're going to go ahead and continue working on the side of our ship, but we're going to be going ahead and focusing on our right side. So for our right side here, we're going to go ahead and place down one, two, three, four, and five stone blocks back for those walls. We're going to place down a iron trap door on the second stone block. Close it using your debug stick. Then we're going to place down two light gray stainless panes. After this light gray stainless pane here, you're going to place down an andesite wall. You're going to go and then follow it up with your stone blocks, which you're going to place down one, two, three, four, going back. After that's done, on the second stone block from the front, we're going to place down an iron trap door. Again, use our debug stick here to close it. And then our light gray stainless pane, and then an andesite wall. We then want to take our stone blocks. We're going to build one, two, three, four, five, and six blocks back. On these last two blocks, so fifth and six, we're gonna place down two stone upside down stairs coming off of them, just like that to the side for the time being. We're gonna go ahead and take our stone blocks, we're gonna go back one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and on our and an eighth stone block, on our eighth stone block, we're gonna place down a stone upside down stair. We're gonna go ahead and then continue off for stone blocks, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, then we want to place down one, two, three andesite walls and two like gray stainless panes. On the inside here of the walls and panes, we're going to place down one, two, three, four, and five stone full blocks. We're going to continue on with a six and a seventh, so it looks like this. We're going to place down an iron trap door here, close it for our debug stick, and then we're going to place down a so before we go ahead and continue on, I just noticed that I did make one mistake here. So we actually have two andesite walls here. This is actually supposed to be one. So we're going to delete this first andesite wall here that's on top of that um, that top slab there. And it should just be a stone block on both sides like that. We will go ahead and also uh, modify this so that we have an andesite wall going back as well. Instead of just three glass panes, we have two just to kind of help that slant a little bit better. Um, anyways though, once we have that complete there, we're going to go ahead and then place down a... Um, narrow stone block right here with a skeleton skull coming off of it. We're going to go ahead and place down two walls on top of those two there, and then we're going to place down three light gray stainless panes, and then on the inside here we're going to place down one, two, three, four, five stone blocks, followed by a six, seven, and eight going back. We're going to place down a skeleton skull on the side of this stone block here, then an iron trap door which we'll go ahead and close like so, and then we want to go ahead and place down a stone full block here on top of this trap or this uh, upside down stair and then a inside wall in the corner. Uh, we're going to go ahead and also place down a glass pane coming off this stone block and then a skeleton skull on this wall here. Same thing will be done over on this side and the inside wall and a skeleton skull like so. If you do have access to a debug stick you can also change the properties of this glass pane to actually extend it to connect up to the sides of the stairs or the skulls there. So just something to keep in mind also you can do for a little bit of extra shaping. Going ahead and going forward from this, we're going to place down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight stone blocks coming off that wall there. And we're going to go ahead and then place down one and two iron trap doors, which we'll go ahead and close with our debug stick. Then we're going to place down one, two, three glass panes. And then we want to place down a one and two inside walls. We're going to go ahead and then place down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, stone full blocks. Along the side here, we're going to go ahead and go to our second, or sorry, our third stone block from the back. We're going to place down an iron trap door, uh, debug stick, and then we're going to go ahead and do two light gray stainless panes, and then three andesite walls going forward. 
And then we're gonna add one more stone block behind this wall, like so. After this 30 inside wall, we're gonna take our stone and we're gonna continue forward with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve stone blocks. On this 12 stone block, you're gonna go ahead and place down a lever to the side of it, like that. Then we're gonna place down one, two, three, four, five more stone blocks, and then another lever just like that. We're gonna take our stone, go forward one, two, three uh, blocks, like so. So go ahead and continue after the stone block. We're gonna place down one more, so you have a total of two. Then we have a andesite wall, and then we have a light gray stainless pane. On the inside here of those, we're gonna take our stone full blocks. We're gonna place down one, two, three, four, and then we want to place down an iron trap door on the side of the third stone full block. We'll again use our debug stick there to manually close it, like so. We're gonna go then place down a andesite wall like this, two light gray stainless panes going forward, and then on the inside here, we're gonna place down one, two, three stone blocks followed by a uh, fourth and a fifth going forward, and that should connect us up to our battle section of the ship. And then we just want to place down an iron trap door on the side of this second from the front stone block. And again, we'll close it manually like so. Um, after that, we also need to go ahead and take our iron trap doors, and we're going to place down a iron trap door that's going to go here, come off this stone block, and then we're going to place down two iron trap doors coming off these two iron trap doors. So it's going to sit right there in that section like that. And after you have that all done, that is going to conclude everything we have for layer 3. Here is a top-down view of what we should have so far with this layer complete. Another optional thing you can do is to go ahead and fill the inside in of the ship. For me, I like to fill it in um, because I think it just kind of makes the build a little more solid. And it just overall makes things a little bit easier when we go up layer by layer. Um, so that's why I went ahead and did, just fill this all in completely. But again, you guys really don't have to. Anyways though, with that, let's go ahead and move on to our next layer, which will be layer number 5. Moving into our next layer, we have layer 5. The next two layers here are probably going to be the longest for the tutorial, just due to we have a lot of stuff going on, a lot of asymmetry between the two sides. So again, just be sure you're paying close attention to what we're placing and where we're placing it, and let's go ahead and continue on. Now the first thing we want to go ahead and do is we're going to place down a stone slab here on top of this um, lever on the very front. We're also going to go ahead and place down an upside down stone stair coming off both sides of that stone slab so it looks like this here on the front. We're going to place down a birchwood sign in, on that slab in between the stairs like so. After that uh, we want to go ahead and build back from that with uh, some uh, birchwood fence posts. So we're going to place down a fence post on top of those two skeleton skulls and then we're going to place down a stone brick slab down the center. We're going to place down a second stone brick slab and then a stone cutter like this to start forming that front section here. Then we're going to place down a stone slab to both sides of this stone brick slab, as well as two birchwood signs along the side of the fence post and the stone slab for the time being. Um, after we have that done, we want to go ahead and then place down an andesite wall on both sides of the stone cutter. And then again, a birchwood sign on the side of those. Once we have that done, we're going to take our skeleton skulls and place down a skeleton skull here, as well as a stone slab to both sides of the skeleton skull. This here will also have a skeleton skull coming off the side of the stone slabs. We then want to place down two stone blocks down the center here and two stone stairs to the sides. We're going to place down skeleton skulls coming off the side of those, or the front of the stairs, like that. We're going to place down a row of three of stone blocks across. This is going to be followed with a light gray stingless paint to both sides. We want to place down a second row of three across, this time with an andesite wall on both ends. And then we're going to go ahead and place down two rows of five of stone full blocks. At this point in time, we're going to go ahead and now focus our attention solely to the right side, and we're going to go ahead and loop our way around the ship to go ahead and get this built. Now, on this side here, we're going to go ahead and place down a polished black or two polished black stone buttons on these two stone blocks. We then want to go ahead and grab ourselves some of this polished deep slate, and we're going to place down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven blocks going back along the side here. Now what we're going to do next is we're going to place down skeleton schools on top of this iron trap door and on top of this block space like so. We're going to go and then take our iron trap doors, we're going to place down two here. And just like we did before, we're going to place down birchwood signs on the side of the trap doors like that. We're going to go and then place down a stone upside down stair and we're going to go and then grab ourselves some of those polished deep slate walls, which we're going to place down two walls here. We're going to go and then place down a stone block after those walls. And we also want to go ahead and grab ourselves an item frame and a light gray bed. 
we're going to place down an item frame and a light gray bed on the side of the stone block as well as a birchwood sign on the side of the block if you're on Java. We're going to go then place down two more stone blocks and on top of these uh, stone stairs here we're going to place down two levers with item frames on the top of the stone stairs as well. Again, those item frames added if you're on Java. If not, you'll just be placed down the levers. We're gonna go ahead and then uh, grab ourselves some polished black stone walls, or polished black stone brick walls. We're gonna place down one here, then a stone block. On the stone block, we're gonna have a polished black stone button. Then we're gonna place down an air polished black stone brick wall, two stone blocks, two polished black stone block buttons on those blocks. A narrow polished black stone brick wall. And then we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten stone blocks back. On the second to last stone block, you're gonna place down a polished black stone button. You're gonna skip one, two, and on your third space, an air stone button. Or another uh, black stone button. And then one, two, and then your third one again, another black stone button, and then one right here on this block here. We're gonna go and do the same thing we did up here for another anti-aircraft gun position on the side of the ship with a lever and a item frame on the bottom of it if you're on Java, so it's gonna look like that. Once we have that done, we're gonna go ahead and grab our polished black stone walls again, and we're gonna place down one coming off this stone block, and then we're gonna place down two andesite walls. We're gonna go ahead and take our stone blocks, and we're gonna place down one, two, three stone blocks directly behind those. Once we have that done, we wanna go ahead and grab an anvil. We're gonna place down an anvil here, and then behind that, we're gonna place down a stone full block. We're gonna place down a second stone full block. And we wanna go and then grab our polished uh, deep slate. We're gonna place down one, two, three, and four polished deep slate blocks. Now we're gonna go ahead and then take our white beds. And we're gonna place down a white bed on this stone block here and on this wall here. We're going to go ahead and also grab ourselves a gray carpet and we're going to be placing on a gray carpet that is going to sit on top of this stone block here. Now next to this skull here, if you're on Java, we're going to place down a stone block and we want to go ahead and then grab our lever. We're going to be using our debug stick here to go ahead and modify the lever by left clicking it until we get selected face. We're going to go ahead and right click this set to floor and then we're going to go ahead and left click it again until we get selected facing and rotate this so that it points out to the side there for a little anti-aircraft gun mount on this side of the ship here. Once we have that done, we're going to go ahead and place down an anvil on top of this glass pane here, and then a stone block directly uh, next to it. We're going to place down a second stone block, and then we want to go ahead and grab ourselves an end rod and place down an end rod on top of this glass pane. After that's done, we're going to go ahead and place down a gray carpet here, and then we're going to place down one, two, three, and the side walls going back. This skull right here is going to have the same thing that we did before with our lever. So again, for my Java players, we'll grab an air lever and we're going to go ahead and use the same technique. Like this. And it should sit like that. So, boom, just like that. If you need to, you can rotate it again as needed. Now in the back here, we're going to place down a stone block next to this uh, wall. And then another stone block over at the side so it should look like this on the back. We then want to take our iron trap doors. We're going to place down a row of three coming off those three blocks there, then a inside wall on top of these two, and then another iron trap door in between them like so. Again, on the back here, we're going to do the same technique that we used before for our anti-aircraft guns, just a lever coming off these blocks. Again, use your debug stick there to go ahead and set them so that they look like that on the back. So, pretty straightforward stuff, and that's going to go ahead and finish our stern of the ship off, and we'll conti now continue by working on our left side. So our left side here, we're going to place down an iron trap door across this stone block. We're going to close it so it lays flat against the side. Uh, we then want to place down a light gray stainless pane after it, followed by a second and third glass pane, and then a andesite wall. We're going to go ahead and then place down a polished black stone wall, like so, and then we want to place down a stone block. We're going to place down one, two, three polished black stone walls, and then a narrow stone block. Behind these uh, the deep slate uh, walls, we're going to go ahead and place down deep slate blocks. And then behind the andesite wall and these three glass panes, we're going to place down stone full blocks. Uh, once we get to this point right here, uh, we're going to go ahead and place down another glass pane that's going to come off this stone block here. And then we want to place down an andesite wall and then a second andesite wall. So you have two there. Then taking our polished deep slate, we're going to go ahead and place down a row of three of walls across there. 
Again, behind these polished deep slate walls, we're going to place down deep slate full blocks, and behind the inside walls, we're going to place down stone full blocks. We're going to go ahead and then place down one, two, and three stone blocks forward. These here will have polished black stone buttons on the side of those blocks. Then one, two, three, four deep slate walls. One, two, three, and four stone full blocks. We're going to have two uh, polished black stone buttons, then a birchwood fence gate right here opened up toward the ship and then we want to have a stone brick wall right next to it so it's going to look like that and after that's done we're going to go ahead and place down some of our polished deep slate blocks behind the walls right there as well just to go ahead and fill in any gaps left open by them now once we get to this section here we're going to be going ahead and again taking our deep slate walls place down a row of four and four blocks right behind those we're going to go ahead and also place down a stone block here and a second one and just like we did right there in that section, we're going to place down a stone brick wall, birchwood fence gate, open it up toward the stone block, and then we want to place down two deep slate walls, uh, two deep slate full blocks behind those walls, then a stone full block here, which is going to have a polished black stone button coming off of it, like that. Then we're going to go ahead and place down one, two, three, and four iron trap doors across the space like so. Taking our polished deep slate blocks, we're going to place down one, two, three, and four across that space there. We'll place a birchwood sign on the side of the slab here, a skeleton skull here, and right here. And then we're going to place down two levers. And like we've done before for my Java players, we're going to place down item frames um, on the bottom of those levers or on the top of the iron trap doors, however you want to look at it, um, just like that. And once we have that all complete there, the last thing for us to do here for this layer is to place down a polished black stone button come off this stone block here so that right there is going to basically complete what we have here for this layer as you can tell is uh, definitely a longer layer we have a lot more going on a lot of detail that we're trying to incorporate now um, the next layer is going to be the same way so just expect a lot of the same in the next layer and after we get um, those two layers done we should be kind of smooth sailing from there on out uh, one thing to mention real quick also is behind these black stone uh, walls right here we do want to go ahead and place down some black concrete so again, just kind of trying to fill in any gaps that might be left open by the walls. But other than that, the rest of the ship in here can be filled in with stone. So I'm just going to go ahead and fill this in like I did before. Again, you don't have to, but again, I like to do it just to kind of keep the build a little bit more consistent and filled in. Anyways, though, that is going to conclude everything we have there for uh, layer number five of the build. And with that, we'll be going ahead and moving on to layer number six. Moving into our next layer, we have layer number six. For layer six to start with, we're going to place down a birch with fence post on top of these two here, and then a stone top slab across in between them. We're going to go ahead and place down one more stone top slab out to either side, like that. Once we have that done, we're going to go ahead and place down a row of five of stone top slabs across behind those. Then after we have that done, we're going to place down an anisite wall on top of the ones from the previous layer, a stone top slab in the middle, and again a stone top slab to both sides of those blocks. We then want to go ahead and place down a row of five of stone top slabs going all the way across again. We're going to place down two stone full blocks down the center here like so. And we then want to go ahead and follow that up with two stone upside down stairs coming off those two stone full blocks like this. And then two stone top slabs coming off the two stone upside down stairs. Once we have uh, that all complete there, we're going to place down a row of three of stone full blocks across followed by an inside wall to both ends and this here is going to have a stone top slab to the sides of those walls as well fuck what the fuck oh yeah that makes sense okay so before we go ahead and continue on we want to go ahead and then take our slabs and we're going to go ahead and actually build a another row out to the side here it's going to be coming off those slabs and those walls all the way along the side there and we should be able to have a row of seven and same thing we've done over here on this side so just like that along both sides now once we get to this point here we actually want to delete those three stone blocks in the center here we're actually going to go ahead and grab shulker boxes and we're going to go ahead and place down a gray shulker box on both sides and then a white shulker box in the middle we then want to place down three gray shulker boxes across with a stone block on both ends and coming off that stone block uh, we're going to go ahead and place down a stone top slab so a stone top slab like so we're going to go ahead and place down another stone block back this time followed by another stone top slab another stone full block top slab on the side and then another stone block back 
and this one here will be followed up with a stone upside down stair on both ends. In the middle space here, we're going to go ahead and just place down another white choker box, gray choker box on both sides. And this middle space here, we can go ahead and fill in with some gray carpet or gray wool. So just row three of gray wool across that space like so. Technically, we can also swap out these stone blocks here to both sides, also with gray wool. Basically, we want to try to keep as much gray wool um, on the inside here as possible. Just kind of helps with our uh, deck a little bit more. Um, anyways, though, at this point in time, we will be going ahead and moving to each side kind of separately and doing both of them kind of independent from each other. So to begin with, we're going to go ahead and place down a row of skeleton skulls. We have one, two, three, four on the right side. And after the skeleton schools, we want to go ahead and grab ourselves a fence gate, a birchwood fence gate. We're going to place down a birchwood fence gate coming off the second skull here. And we then want to go ahead and grab ourselves some end rods. And we're going to place down two end rods coming off it like so. Um, also on the front here of the ship, we do have these anti-aircraft gun positions, which will be done by placing down a lever on top of these two stairs. And we're going to go ahead and also grab ourselves an um, item frame on top of those stone blocks as well. Um, after that's all complete, we then want to go ahead and go back to this last top slab right here. We're going to place down a birchwood fence gate, open it up toward the ship. Then we're going to place down a birchwood sign on the side of the fence gates, an air fence gate like this, and then two end rods coming off those that fence gate like so. Once uh, we have that all done, we're going to go ahead and take our stone top slabs, and we're going to place down one, two, three, and four across this space. And coming off those, we're going to place down four skeleton skulls. One, two, three, four. On the inside here, we're going to place down one, two, three, and four of our polished deep slate blocks, just like that. Then we're going to place down a stone block on top of this stair here. Doing the same thing we've done before, we're going to place down a birchwood fence gate, open it up toward the full block, a birchwood sign on the side, fence gate coming off of that. And then we're going to place down two end rods sticking out from that like that on the side. Get to now we're gonna take our stone blocks. We're gonna place down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine stone full blocks. These are gonna have one, two, three, four polished black stone buttons. We're gonna place down our stone block here. This is gonna be an item frame and it's gonna have a light gray bed in the item frame. And again we can use a birchwood sign on the side of the block as well if you're on Java. Then we're gonna place down three more stone blocks. These again have polished black stone buttons on those blocks. Then a Another stone block, item frame, light gray bed, birchwood sign. Then another stone block, this one just a polished black stone button. And then we want to go ahead and grab a polished black stone brick block, and we're going to place it right here. Then another stone block, and the stone block's going to have a button, or a polished black stone button on it. We then want to place down one, two, three, four, five, and six stone blocks back, followed by an andesite wall. On the side of those blocks, we're going to go ahead and grab ourselves skeleton skulls. Starting on the wall, we're going to place down a skeleton skull, and then one, two, three, and four forward. At this point, we'll go ahead and then also grab some stone brick slabs. We're going to place down one and two stone brick slabs on the side here as well, with birchwood signs on the side of those slabs, like that. After that's done, we're going to place down a stone block here, coming off that wall. And we then want to go ahead and go off the wall with a row of stone top slabs. So we're going to place down one, two. These are going to have birchwood signs on them. Then a nether stone top slab. This one here with a skull. A nether stone top slab. Again, birchwood sign on the side of it. A nether stone top slab. This one here with a fence gate and end rod set up. So we have our fence gate open up like so. Fence gate coming off that and our two end rods to the side. Then a nether stone top slab. Nair skeleton skull. Then one, two, three stone top slabs with birchwood signs coming off those top slabs. Then a nether stone top slab, birchwood fence gate, fence gate coming off of it, and then two end rods. Then four stone top slabs back. The first one here is going to have a birchwood sign. Then we're going to have one and two skeleton skulls, and then three. So it's going to look like that there. Across the back here, we want to go ahead and place down one, two, three stone top slabs, and then another one, two, three out to the side, like so. We're going to place down two skeleton skulls on that side there, and we're going to do the same thing on the other side here. 
two skeletons poles come off those last two or the, the end two stone top slabs um, on the inside here for this section we're gonna go ahead and take our polished deep slate and we're just gonna go ahead and bring this up with full blocks across this section here we also want to go ahead and grab ourselves our grindstone, which we're going to place down here. We're going to place on a stone brick slab and top slab like that for the crane, as well as two iron trap doors. And then we're going to go ahead and place down a grindstone on top of this anvil. And same thing here, we're going to place down a stone brick top sl or half slab right there in that spot. Now we'll take our stone blocks. We're just going to fill in this space here. So one, two, and same thing here one stone block right there, a second one, then an end rod on top of this one, then one, two, three, and side walls across the space here. Then we have our two stone blocks. And we're just gonna take our stone top slabs and fill the space in. So we have one, two, three here, then one, two, just like that. Uh, we actually wanna go ahead and switch this top slab out for a upside down stair. So it's gonna be upside down stair there. That should kind of look like it connects up to the wall there. Um, and then we're going to take our top subs again. One, two, one, two, one, two. So fill in that space in. We have an upside down stair here and a top slab to the side like so. Um, and then again, we're going to have our skeleton skulls on the side here, these two top slabs. So that kind of forms up the rear of the ship and all that. So that's what we have going on there. And we're going to kind of start to transition over to our left side of our ship. So once we get to uh, this point here uh, we want to go, go ahead and begin with by going ahead and placing down go ahead and just double check here and it's gonna be an upside down stair here so it's gonna be an upside down stair right here and then one and two save a total of three we're gonna place down two stone top slabs right here and then one two three along those three upside down stairs we're gonna go ahead and place down an additional one two three four skeleton schools along the side here of the ship as well uh, once we get to this point, we're going to go ahead and place down a andesite wall here, and then a stone full block. This will then be followed with a uh, polished deep slate wall, and then our stone full block. Again, taking our stone slabs, we're going to place down a top slab here, then one and two more, save a total of three top slabs. This section, we're going to place down an upside down stair like this, and an upside down corner stair coming off of it, like so. Uh, we're going to go ahead and Build upon this with three polished black stone or deep slate walls. Then we have our deep slate full blocks directly behind there. Stone block here. Upside down stair. Upside down corner stair. And in between this, we're going to place down one, two, one, two, one, two. So three rows of two or two rows of three of stone tops across that space there. Uh, continuing on, we're going to place down two inside walls right here. So one, two, and then two stone full blocks behind those. These deep slate walls, we're going to place down again three up, three deep slate full blocks, and again, we're going to place down one, two, three, four, five stone top slabs across the side of them. Now, on this last stone top slab, we're going to place down a skeleton school, and then one, two, three back, so you have a total of four. After that, we're going to place down three stone full blocks, two stone top slabs, and then we want to go ahead and place down one, two, three, four stone blocks, and again, three or four stone top slabs. We then want to place down one, two, three, four uh, stone full blocks. We're going to place down a stone brick wall here, birch wood fence gate there, two stone top slabs across um, in between there. After we have that done, we're going to again place down a row of four of our deep slate walls, then a row of four of our deep slate full blocks, and then our two stone blocks here. We'll place down a stone brick wall, birch wood fence gate again opened up toward the ship itself. And then right here, we do have our elevator. So for our elevator here, it's going to be a little bit slightly different um, in terms of how far it sticks out from the ship. Uh, from each one of these walls, we're going to go ahead and go out with two stone top slabs. And then a row of four of iron trap doors all the way across. That's going to be basically our elevator. Pretty simple stuff. Um, then we're going to place down two stone blocks here. Actually, three. And we're going to place down one, two, three stone top slabs coming off those blocks. Um, and then on the last two here, we're going to place down skeleton skulls coming off of those. Now, once we have that done, uh, we're going to go ahead and place down a row of four of our deep slate, polished deep slate uh, blocks. We're going to place down two stone top slabs here, and there are two right here. And this will be a skeleton skull come off the um, stone slab right there. Then we're going to place down one, two right here, 
and we're going to place down one, two, three, four, five skeleton skulls. On this side of the ship here, we're going to take our birchwood um, trapdoor, or rather signs, and we're going to place down a total of one, two, and three signs, and then one, two, three, four of our skeleton skulls going forward. And that right there is going to basically wrap up everything we have here for um, this layer here, layer six. As I mentioned, uh, this here is one of our longest layers. Um, also on the back here, those two anti walls there, we want to close off of stone blocks. Same thing here with this anti wall and also our polished deep slate um, behind that wall right there. So just make sure those get closed off there. Uh, but anyways, that right there is going to pretty much wrap up what we have there. It's Again, this is pretty much our last lo really long layer. The other layers from here on out should be a lot um, easier and a lot more smooth sailing. Um, but again, that is it for this layer here. Here's a top-down view of what it should look like. At this point in time, I would recommend now going ahead and filling in the inside. You will have to fill this in no matter what. So whatever material you use doesn't really matter too much. I would recommend going ahead and filling this in though with gray wool because it will be basically the um, color of the flight deck. Um, and we will have some blocks that kind of are see-through from the top so you will want to make sure you just fill this in again just as much as you can um, any stone or whatever is there for a reason because you can see it from the outside but uh, from the top down view this right here uh, will get us the most coverage so we have that kind of filled in there and again here is a top down view of what it should look like and with that we'll be going ahead and diving into our um, next layer which will be layer number eight moving into our next layer we have layer number seven for layer seven to go ahead and get started with this um, we're going to be going ahead and start with getting our island set up. So for this, we're going to be going ahead and going to this third kind of pole that sticks out from the side of the ship. On the right side here, we're going to go to this fence gate, this stone block it connects to, and on top of that, we're going to place down a polished andesite stair. Going forward from it, we're going to place down a birchwood fence gate like so, and we're also going to place down a birchwood sign on the side of the stair. Behind that, we're going to place down an anvil, and then an end rod. We want to go ahead and then grab our, uh, like Grace Nameless Panes, we're going to place down two glass panes, right here, an anisite wall on the further side, and then a glass pane on this side. Going back from the wall, we're going to place down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight uh, stone full blocks, and we're going to go ahead and then place down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight light gray stainless panes. We then want to place down two stone full blocks, then an anvil, and after that we want to place down a polished anisite stair here, birchwood fence gate coming off of it open up toward the stair and then a birchwood sign on the side. Also underneath the fence gate here, if you're on Java, we can go ahead and place down a um, item frame and we can do this on both sides here. And in that item frame, we can actually go ahead and place down a gray stainless pane just to kind of help keep a little bit more of the deck color. It's not perfect, but it kind of helps a little bit um, in keeping that color more consistent. On the sides here are these um, glass panes we are going to go ahead and grab some of our birchwood signs and just place down a row all the way along the side here and it's going to stop at the second from front glass pane so right there um, after that's all done that is going to basically create what we need to for the island so far for this layer and let's go ahead and dive into the um Let's go ahead and dive into the flight deck. So the flight deck here is pretty straightforward. We're going to go ahead and start off with this stone slab on the front here. We're going to place down a white carpet and then a gray carpet. And we're going to go ahead and do this alternating pattern all the way down. We're going to go ahead and skip the shulker boxes. We're going to leave those alone. And then right after the shulker boxes, we're going to continue on. So we have white here. So we have a gray carpet, white, gray, white. And again, we're just going to continue to alternate this pattern all the way down the center line of the flight deck. So again, it's just going to take a little bit of time. It's a little bit of a tedious chore here, but uh, kind of a necessity to get um, the carrier all complete. And it's going to bring us all the way back to that point there. So before we go ahead and continue on, we're also going to make one alteration here for our um, rear flight deck uh, elevator. And that's actually going to be going ahead and going in this position right here. So you can kind of see perspective where it's at. It's basically this section here. We have this, uh, you know, this door here that would be on the side of the ship. Uh, it's basically right behind this. So we're going to place down, we're going to replace these gray wool blocks with our 
um, gray shulker boxes. We're going to replace that white carpet with a white shulker box, gray on both sides. And then again, the gray shulker box is right there next to it. So it should be located right there. Um, you do want to go ahead and add that in as that is um, an elevator that we have present on the ship. Um, so once that's loaded in um, and good to go, we can go ahead and continue on for deck. Now, once we have that done on the sides of the line that we just did down the center, we're going to go ahead and do rows of gray carpet. And again, we're going to go ahead and skip over the shulker boxes. We're not going to place down carpet on top of those. You know, all the way forward. Like so, and same thing will be done over here on this side. So just like this. And again, we're going to skip over that space there. And we're going to bring this all the way to the back of the ship. Now to the sides, now we're going to do the same alternating pattern that we did before for our um, stripes. So again, this is going to be the same alternating pattern all the way along the side of the ship. The line that's closest here to the flight deck is going to be slightly different. Uh, once we get to this point here, so right before we get to the fence gate, we're going to go ahead and actually stop the white, and we're just going to go ahead and take gray carpet and continue it all the way to the island, like so. Um, then going away from the island, we're going to go ahead and go all the way forward from this glass pane, one, two, until we get to the stair. Once we get to the stair, we'll resume our white carpet, so we have white carpet, then gray, white, gray, white, gray, and Again, so on alternating this pattern all the way to the front of the ship. After that, any gray that's left over on this right side here, or any um, stone that is exposed, we can go ahead and just place down gray carpet anywhere that is um, available. So, just kind of all the way along here, and we have our right set side of the deck done. We're going to do the same thing over here now on the left side. So again, we're going to have this alternating pattern all the way down the deck. It should go all the way to the front without any interruptions. And just like that, we have the third and last striped row going. And then again, just like uh, we did before, any remaining stone top slabs, full blocks, um, walls, whatever, we're going to go ahead and place down our gray carpet. Um, we'll also place them on top of the fence gate and stone brick walls there. And as well as our elevator out to the side. And we'll pretty much get this all filled in so it looks just like that. And that is going to create our flight deck. So with our flight deck complete, we're really starting to kind of see the carrier come together. Um, it's really starting to look like a carrier now instead of just a mix of blocks. And that is pretty much um, it for that. Now, one thing I am going to go ahead and talk about now is going to be, again, more of a Java-related feature. Um, unfortunately, if you are not on Java, I would recommend just going ahead and skipping ahead to the next layer. Um, as this is going to kind of be a little bit of a longer section that is going to be for my Java players in which we'll be going ahead and adding some anti-aircraft guns onto the ship, but we will be doing it using our debug stick, which again is not available on other versions other than Java. So again, Java players stick around. Anybody else, I would recommend just going ahead and skipping ahead. So for my Java players, we're going to go ahead and go to these skeleton skulls that are on the side of the previous layer. And we're just going to build a block that kind of goes up and out to the side from them. And we're just going to go ahead and do this for every single one of these skeleton skulls. Um, so it's going to be a little bit of a tedious process, just going ahead and going to each one of these schools and doing it, um, but I will tell you in the end it is going to be worth it, and it really kind of helps sell um, these as anti-aircraft gun positions. So again, I'm not using any particular block um, in particular, just something that you can easily tell apart from the build and something that you're going to delete later. So just some yellow concrete here is easy enough to tell apart and we're just going to go ahead and again continue to place these blocks and just our last couple of schools right here. Now on each one of these blocks we're going to go ahead and now place down levers and we're going to place them so that they're on top of the schools which will make them easier to go ahead and use our debug stick a little bit later. So again we're replacing these on each one of these blocks and you want to make sure again that they are on the side of the block that is above the school. And just like that, we have them all placed. 
Now we're gonna go then take our debug stick here. We're gonna left click these till we get selected face wall. And we're gonna go ahead and right click each one of these levers and get rid of, or basically set them to the floor. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna set the lever on top of the skeleton skull, which helps create the um, impression or the look that these are anti-aircraft gun positions. Um, and they surround the ship all the way around. I think it's a cool little detail. Um, definitely helps kind of sell the anti-aircraft gun positions, makes the ship look a little bit more menacing and a lot of fun stuff. And with that, we'll just go ahead and delete the blocks that we use to connect the levers to all the way around the ship. And once you have that done, that is going to be um, it for that. Again, we'll just go ahead and continue to place these blocks and that right there is going to finish off everything we have there for layer number eight of the build or sorry about layer number seven with that we will be going ahead and moving on to layer number eight moving into our next layer we have layer eight um, what's nice now is that really the only focus now is going to be left on our island pretty much the rest of the whole of the ship and flight deck are all complete so let's go ahead and work on our island here we're going to begin with by placing a polished anisate stair or sorry slab on top of the anvil there and we're going to go and then place down a broken fence gate coming off it opened up forward we then want to place down a skeleton skull on the end rod directly behind that. And after that, we're going to place down a stone block on top of that wall right there. And then a stone stair here to the side with a skeleton skull coming off the side of the stair. Um, we then actually want to go and swap out this stone full block here behind that stair actually for a inside wall. So just go ahead and make sure you do that. Um, then once we have that done, we're going to take our stone blocks and along the side here of the island, we're going to place down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight stone full blocks. We're going to take our birchwood signs, we're going to place down a birchwood sign on the side of the wall. One, two, three, and four back. And then we want to go and grab our light gray stained glass panes. Place down one, two, three. And then a skeleton skull right here. On the other side here, we're going to place down a glass pane. And we then want to place down two stone upside down stairs with birchwood signs on the side of the stairs. Then we're going to place down a, another glass pane right here which we followed up by again one two three and four stone stairs and on the side of those four stone stairs we're going to place down our glass or sorry our birchwood signs uh, for the glass panes here using your debug stick you can actually go ahead and extend the sides here of the glass panes to connect up to the stairs here just to kind of help form the back a little bit more um, so again kind of up to you guys on how you want to go ahead and go about doing that you can do the same thing down here and remove that connection so Again, kind of might vary which direction you need to get rid of or extend, um, depending on what version you're on, but or what uh, direction you have the ship facing. But just kind of a ways to kind of make the sides of the ship look a little bit more cleaner. Um, with that, though, we're going to go ahead and place down a skeleton skull on top of this space here. This will also be expanded upon with a lever. And we're going to go ahead and then place down an item frame on the space below the lever. So like that. We then want to place down a polished anisite slab here and a birchwood fence gate coming off the polished anisite slab so that is going to pretty much wrap up what we have here for layer number eight of the build and with that we'll be going ahead and moving into our next layer which will be layer number nine so before we go ahead and move into layer nine a quick uh, thing to add on for my java players is going to be the addition of two levers on top of these glass panes we'll use the same technique we did before some blocks that sides these levers above those panes and we're going to go ahead and then left click the levers with our debug stick select a face we're going to go ahead and set the floor left click these again until we get selected facing and we're going to go ahead and rotate these so that they face forward like so and then underneath these we can go ahead and place down item frames kind of the same technique we've been doing before with that done we'll be going ahead and now moving into layer eight which will be or sorry layer number nine here which will be started with two stone full blocks across the space here with a polished black stone button on both sides and two skeleton schools coming off the front there for the bridge on the left side here we're going to place down one two three four five six and seven stone blocks we'll place down an iron trap door that is going to sit on top of that middle glass pane, an item frame to the side, and in that item frame, we're going to go ahead and place down a snowball for a searchlight. Then on both sides of that, we're going to go ahead and place down flower pots. So we'll go ahead and grab these and place down a flower pot to both sides, as well as a flower pot on top of this skeleton skull here. Um, we're also going to go ahead and uh, place down a skeleton or a block here off the skeleton skull. And then skeleton skull on top of that block kind of at an angle so it kind of comes off the rear there of the conning tower. There's going to be a lever here with an item frame underneath it if you're on Java. 
Also, going back up to the front of the Klein Tower, the island, we're going to place down one, two, and three glass panes after that polished box, no button. On the other side, uh, we want to go ahead and uh, continue to build upon what we um, started before. So we're going to place down three glass panes. So one, two, three, and then a stone upside down stair. Then after that stone upside down stair, we're going to go ahead and place down another three glass panes going back. So one, two, three, just like that. And then in this section right here on top of this glass pane, again for my Java players, we'll go ahead and add a lever. Unfortunately, if you're not on Java, you will not be able to um, add a lever here. But for Java, we can, and we're going to go ahead and add that right there. And again, an item frame underneath it for, again, another anti-aircraft gun located there. And once we have that all done, that is going to wrap up everything we have there for number layer number eight, or layer number nine of the build. And with that, we're just going to be going ahead and moving into our final layers and just wrapping up the tutorial. So with that, let's go ahead and move into our last final layers. All right, guys, moving into our final layers, we have layers 10 through 17. These layers here, we're going to go ahead and, of course, go straight to our island. And we're going to place down two flower pots on top of these two skeleton skulls here. After that, we're going to place down an andesite wall on this side, and then a light gray stainless pane after that. We then want to go ahead and place down one and two more andesite walls, and then again, one and two uh, light gray stainless panes on the other side. And actually, sorry, it's going to be one more glass pane and then a andesite wall, so it's going to look like that there. Once we have that done, we want to go ahead and also place down an iron trap door that's going to sit on top of this glass pane here, and it's going to have an item frame on the side of it, and just like we did before, a snowball. Um, so like this, and then a flower pot on top of this glass pane right there. On the other side, there's going to be a flower pot on top of that glass pane, and in this middle space, we're going to go and grab a birchwood fence gate, place down a fence gate, and open this toward the rear of the ship. We then want to place down one, two, three stone blocks. On top of those three stone blocks, we're going to go ahead and place down black concrete, which will be one, two, three. On top of the black concrete, we're going to place down three item frames. We then want to place down iron bars, so one, two, three iron bars. And if you're on Java, we're also going to go ahead and place down polished blackstone buttons on the tops of those blocks as well. So it will kind of help create the top there like that. Once uh, that's complete, on the back here, we're going to place down an iron trapdoor. So an iron trap door here, skeleton skull coming off the iron trap door, and then a birchwood sign on the side of it. On the other side here, we're going to go ahead and place down a stone brick stair, and then a iron bar on top of that for the time being. And then also up here in the front, we're going to go ahead and go on top of this and inside wall, place down a stone brick stair, and then an iron bar on top of that one. Uh, we will also want to go ahead and grab ourselves some levers again. And for my Java players, we're going to use the same technique we've been using. And we're going to place down levers coming off the, or on top of the glass pane and the wall right here. So just like that. Now, after that is all complete, uh, we want to go ahead and then grab ourselves our um, birchwood fence post. We're going to place down a birchwood fence post here. Another birchwood fence gate, which will open up toward the fence post. And then a fence gate on top of that one. Again, opened up toward the front. And a birchwood fence post on top of that one. We then want to place down an inside wall on top of this fence post, as well as a stone brick up down stair going um, from behind it, and then a skeleton skull from both sides of the stone brick stair. Uh, we're also going to go ahead and grab ourselves some end rods, and we're going to place down two end rods coming off the fence gate below that wall stair on both sides. So just like that. Then going up from the stair, we're going to place down one, two, and three end rods. We're going to place down end rods come off the sides of the top two. And then an iron bar on the very top. Then on top of this uh, wall here, we're going to place down an iron bar and then one e to each side. And then we're going to place down another row of three of iron bars are directly across the top there of it. So it looks like that. Now if you're on Java, we can go ahead and extend the iron bar out to the sides here. Like that. You can also use a trap door as an alternative to um, create the same effect. After that is done there, we want to go ahead and then place down a lever that's going to sit right here. And going up from that, we're going to place down two end rods and then an iron bar. We're going to go ahead and then place down one end rod to both sides of this top iron bar or end rod like that. Then after we have uh, that all complete, we're going to go ahead and then place down a lever, come off the side of this black concrete block. We're going to place down an iron bar on top of that. And again, we're going to use our debug stick here to extend 
the iron bars in both directions to kind of create that shape there. Again, you can use a trap door as an alternative. And same thing will be done for this section here. We'll be extending it across there like that for our um, weapons director. Um, the last thing, or one of the last things here for us to go ahead and do is going to be the addition of the spotlight on the other side of the ship. So we have a spotlight here, iron trap door, item frame, and our snowball. So it's going to look like that there on that side. Now, after that's all done, really all that's left here for us to do is going to be the rigging for the ship. So for the rigging here, we're going to place down a barrier block on top of these skeleton skulls and a button on the sides and also on the back here of those blocks. We're going to go ahead and take our barrier blocks and we're going to go ahead and go down from that. So below these end rods, we're going to have one, two, and then one. And then same thing over here. We have one, two, and one. Now we're going to go ahead and place down two buttons here and one on the side. And then one just on this one side here. Same thing over here. One, two, three, and one right here. Underneath those barrier blocks on the bottom of those, we can place down a lever and have that flicked toward the the tower so it looks something like that there from the front after that is all complete we're going to go ahead and then go to the back here coming off the this end rod here on both sides we're going to place down a barrier block we're going to place down buttons on these two sides and then only on the left side can we go down one more barrier block so we're just going to drop down one right here and a stone button come off that like that so it looks like that uh, for the rigging and once you have that all done right there, that is going to complete um, layers 10 through 17. And with that, my tutorial here for the USS Ticonderoga Essex class aircraft carrier. Hope you guys do enjoy this tutorial and are able to put it to good use. If you do use this build, I do ask that you guys give me proper credit for it. This will be thanks for my sign of the build. Tweet to my channel or this video if this does appear on social media sites. As long as you guys give me proper credit for it, you're free to for a project you guys are working on. Uh, with that though, thank you guys again so much for watching. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. This is Mikir24, and I will see you guys next time.